So, you've gotten an EV and now you want to take it for a road trip. There's a lot of questions about EVs in Malaysia, such as, are EVs practical for long distance trips? Is it hard to find a charger? And would I run out of battery halfway? Well, don't worry, we've got you covered. This is Alex from SoyaChainShow.com and we're going to answer all your questions about EVs here in Malaysia. If you want to stay up to date about EVs, do subscribe us on YouTube and also hit the notification bell icon so that you will be informed of our future videos. Cue the intro. I've been driving EVs for an extensive period of time. I personally drive a Kia EV6 and have driven over 15,000 km so far. I've been to Ipoh, Melaka and even Johor with it. Recently, I've also taken the Hyundai Ioniq 6 on a single charge challenge from Taiping all the way to JB. So you can say that I know a thing or two about long distance driving with an EV. If you plan to drive long distance, here are the top tips that you need to know. Firstly, not all EVs are built the same. There are different motors, batteries and efficiency figures which affect the overall driving and range. You need to understand your EV's total range on a full charge. Most EVs these days can do 400km and above, but there are some EVs with smaller batteries which can do 300km or less. If the destination is say 350km away, an EV with 400km of range should be able to do the job on a single charge. If the destination is further away, you need to plan a charging top up along the way. Of course, you need to buffer the range a little bit more as it all depends on your driving style. Another thing to take note is your EV supported charging speed. For long distance drives, you probably need to use DC fast charging. But the charging rate is different for each car. Some can do over 200 kilowatts, which is super fast, while others may do 100 kilowatts or less. AC charging is the most cost effective way to charge when your car is parked at the destination. For example, when you're at a hotel, shopping mall, or at a tourist attraction. Most EVs can do 11 kilowatt, where a full charge can be achieved in about 5 to 7 hours. But there are other EVs, especially from China, like BYD and GWM Aura, that charge slower at 7 kilowatts, and a full charge may take 10 hours or longer, depending on the battery size. There are also some EVs like the Renault Zoe or the Lotus Electric that can accept 22 kilowatts on AC and can get a full charge in just 3 hours, which is amazing. Unlike petrol stations, the reality is that EV chargers are still not widely available yet in Malaysia. And finding one isn't as obvious as they don't have a huge sign like petrol stations. However, today, it is still possible to have a seamless long distance trip on your EV, just that you need a little bit of planning. In a typical road trip, you definitely need to have some toilet breaks along the way, and you can plan those breaks with a bit of EV charging. A quick 10 to 20 minutes of DC fast charging can deliver a massive top up for the battery. So if you're traveling somewhere, find out what charges are available at the destination as well as a midpoint for the journey. At the moment, there are quite a number of charges between Johor to Penang and there are some charges between East Coast and the Klang Valley. So the biggest question is, how do you find these charges? Well, there are a couple of apps that you can download to make life much easier. The first app is PlugShare, which is basically like Foursquare of EV chargers. Not only you can view all chargers on the map, you can also check out details of the charger, like which network is it on, what are the rates, and you can also check out the reviews and the comments for the charger. PlugShare is also a great place to find out the exact location of the charger, especially if it's inside a building's car park. Also, we recommend that you check in and check out so that other people will know that you're using a charger and for how long. This is great for the EV community so that everyone knows the status of the charger. Another app or website that is useful to plan your long distance journey is a Better Route Planner or ABPR. You can select your EV, the starting and end point of your trip, and it will recommend your EV charging stops along the way. You can even add more filters like do you prefer fewer or more stops along the way and how much charge remaining you like to have when you reach at the destination. Your driving habits can also have a huge impact to your car's mileage. So if you're light-footed, you can probably squeeze more range from a single charge and get somewhere closer to the advertised range. If you're heavy-footed and with a lot of spirited driving, you can get even lower range. You might hear people saying that EVs won't survive a traffic jam, especially during Balik Kampong. Actually, that's a huge myth, and jams is where EVs do better than petrol engines. When you're stuck in a jam, the motors are not using any energy, and the batteries are just used just to turn on the AC and to run the electronics, which is like 1kW. In stop and go traffic, 
EVs are highly efficient because it uses regenerative braking to recoup back energy to the battery. To really get the most out of your EV's battery, just keep to the speed limit and you do just fine. Personally, I recommend setting adaptive cruise control at a maximum of 110 km per hour and drive on eco mode. And here's my personal tip. Malaysians really love to hog the centre lane at interstate highways. So what I normally do is to stay in the left lane unless I'm overtaking. And the left lane is actually a lot clearer than you think. And to me, sticking in the left lane is less stressful as you don't have to keep on cutting in and out between the middle and the fast lane. Here's where a lot of first-time EV owners got it wrong. With an EV, you don't really need to charge it to full all the time. I know it's an old habit with petrol cars where we tend to just pump to full. With EVs, there's something called the charging curve and essentially, the charging rate slows down significantly when the battery reaches 80%. Similar to smartphones, EVs often boast their fast charging speeds from 10 to 80%. And the reason for that is the time to charge from 80 to 100% may actually take much longer than charging from 10 to 80%. So instead of wasting your time for the final 20%, you can just stop charging, continue on with the journey, and charge again when you need it at the next stop. So instead of spending 40 minutes at the charger, you can probably just do 20 minutes here, and then just continue driving and top up for another 20 minutes at the next INR. When you're at a DC charging stop, just charge what you need or up to 80%. If you plan your journey properly and there's a charger at destination, just make sure you have enough range to get there with about 50 km of extra buffer. Of course, there are some exceptions. If you're driving an EV with a tiny battery like the Mazda MX-30 or Mini Cooper Electric or the older Nissan Leaf, well, yeah, you probably need to charge to 100% because you really need that amount of range to reach the destination. From my experience of driving long distance, I would recommend Gentari, Jom Charge and Charge EV. Most of the new chargers are priced based per kilowatt hour, which is a much more fairer way to pay for EV charging. There are also some chargers that are priced per minute, but the rates are still pretty okay. And my least favorite DC fast charging network is Shell Recharge along the North South Expressway because they're just too expensive. It costs 4 ringgit per minute, which is crazy, and I thought that you need to reload at least 200 ringgit to start charging. I recommend that you stay away from these chargers unless you really need it as a last resort. Of course, there are other charging networks out there like Charsini and TMB Electron, which are pretty decent as well. So search around using the PlugShare app because there could be a better charger around the corner. During the festive season, there's always concern about long queues at a charger, which is actually quite true. If you want to have the high chance of available charger, do find other alternative locations that have more nozzles or charging stations. That way, there's a higher chance of an available charger for you. If a charger is offered for free, well, it's likely there's going to be a long queue. So it might be more worthwhile to pay a little bit more for better availability. Most if not all EVs don't have a spare tyre and most brands do this in the name of weight saving, but I think it's a cost saving move. Most motor cars and EVs come with a tyre repair kit, but from my experience, that can destroy any chances of patching up the tyre and you have to throw it away. You see, most repair kit is just a temporary solution. Whether or not it works, you have to replace it with a new tyre. My suggestion is either get the car towed to a workshop that can get the tyre patch, or get one of those tyre repair strips. If you're travelling on the toll highways, you can always contact the highway assist to help jack your car up and patch the tyre. So here are my 5 key takeaways. Number 1, plan your journey and your charging stops. Number 2, drive sensibly within the speed limit. Number 3, choose your chargers wisely. Number 4, stop at 80% for DC fast charging. And the last one is drive safe. If you have any questions about EV and EV charging, drop it down below and we try to answer them as soon as possible. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, like us on Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe us on our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon so they'll be informed about future videos. This is Alex from SoyaChincha.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next one. Bye!